Okay, so I wanted to talk about the uh, an Ethernet packet over here, um, along with the um, the Ethernet frame. And uh, basically, uh, when the e actual entire Ethernet packet exists both within the physical and the data link layer, so the frame part right here exists within the data link layer, and then these two on the outside are part of the physical layer. Okay. And so I'll just go ahead and start. So the very beginning part um, of the packet is called the preamble. And the preamble is just used for synchronization. It is a series of ones and zeros, as you can see here, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. And it goes through for seven bytes. It repeats that pattern. And then on the eighth byte, it switches to something called the start frame delimiter. And the preamble, the reason why it's, it does this, you need a preamble, is for clock synchronization. So that when you send the bits, uh, well, they're synchronized uh, with from receiver to sender. Okay, so that's where you need those seven bytes. The eighth byte is the start frame delimiter. That one is the exact same sequence, but it ends with a one one. So it has two ones at the end. And the reason you need that is to to tell the uh, device that you're you're going to start actually de delivering the Ethernet frame. Okay, so these this part right here is generally uh, not seen because it is stripped by the um, the the actual network interface card. Um, so that's why you generally just see this part right here, and this is the actual Ethernet frame. Okay, uh, now the Ethernet frame, as you can see here, is 64 to 15, 18 bytes. Um, I believe you could go down all the way to uh, 15, 22 bytes if you have a 802.1Q option. Uh, I'll maybe go over that after I finish this. Uh, but the first part of the Ethernet frame is the destination address. Now, the destination address is a MAC address. Um, and if you want to look more into MAC addresses, Wikipedia has that. Uh, but just the media access control address. And what it is, it is the physical address of the device. So if I'm trying to contact the router, then it is the physical address of the router. Specifically, it is the address of the uh, network interface card of that router, and it's 48 bits or six bytes. That's the first thing that goes in. The second thing that goes in is the source uh, MAC address. So uh, same thing, 48 bits or six bytes. Now the source MAC address, if I am trying with my computer to access the router, then uh, that'll be my, my MAC address. Now, um, if I have multiple uh, interface cards, uh, network interface cards, and it'll be whatever interface card, network interface card is trying to make contact with the router. So that MAC address is the actual address of the interface, the network interface card. Um, so generally you only have one, so uh, you have your MAC addresses and you can look that up um, by going to the command prompt. Um, okay, so that's that. And then uh, the next field is two bytes, it's called the type field. Um, I mean, I think Wikipedia explains it a little bit better, but I, I really like this colorful diagram, so I'm going to just use this as the type field. Um, um, it says, it gives the type of protocol that is encapsulated within the data. So generally, if you have an Ethernet frame, generally the next protocol will be the IP, uh, IPv4, or IPv6, or something like that. So it will give that, that'll be what, the, it'll give a number that represents that, that field, uh, or whatever it is, whatever the, the, the next, whatever it's encapsulated, whatever it's actually in the data, that protocol, that'll be in there. Now, depending on the uh, actual version of the Ethernet version or, or whatever type of packet you're receiving, um, this could also just be the size of the entire um, frame. So um, Wikipedia has a little better explanation on this. They don't call it the type. They, they call it something else, and I might go over that in just a minute because of that. Okay, the next part is the, um, the actual data itself. So if, you're, if I'm trying to send a, uh, if I'm trying to, you know, uh, get in contact with Google, it first has to go to my router, but that's going to contain uh, within this Ethernet frame, it's going to contain the request in an IPv4 header in here in this data packet along with all the other headers that are stacked, they're all gonna be in, inside of here. Um, so that's the data part. It's 46 to 1500 bytes, and I'll go over it uh, 
more detail in just a minute. Um, and then you have the 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 uh, FCS, uh, which stands for uh, what is it? Frame checks, frame checks sequence, and it's just the uh, error detection. Uh, the um, Ethernet uses a cyclic redundancy check, 32 bits or four bytes, and it just checks for error basically. And it's supposed to be pretty good at checking for errors. Um, and then so that right there is the actual frame that exists within the data link layer. So this is generally what you'll see if you're using that Warren Shark or something like that. Generally, you won't see these two, these other parts. Um, and this right here is just the interframe gap, inter interpacket actually, interpacket gap or interframe gap, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's supposed to be it says 9.6 u, but it's supposed to be 12 bytes of basically uh, in between the the Ethernet packets that are sent. Uh, it's supposed to be kind of like 12 gap of of silence kind of. Um, so that it doesn't go back to back. Okay, so hopefully that helped. Uh, let me see if Wikipedia, what I missed with Wikipedia. Uh, let me see. Okay, so this is how Wikipedia has it. Uh, so as you can see here, it's the same thing. Here's the data link. Here's the physical layer. Uh, I like Wikipedia because it has a bunch of much information, but if this is the first time, it might be kind of confusing to see everything. Uh, so as you can see here, you have the preamble. Same thing, seven bytes of ones and zeros. You have the start frame delimiter, which is one byte of ones and zeros, but it ends with two ones to signal the to signal the beginning of the actual frame. And then you have the destination MAC address, the source MAC address. Okay, this is the other thing I wanted to say. So um, there is the Ethernet packet, and this is just more advanced. So if, if you don't care about this, and whatever, just end the video here. Um, the you could also have an option uh, 802.1 Q tag, which is used for virtual LANs. Um, just to designate which virtual LAN this packet belongs to, and also is used for priority within that LAN, so um, y so that the LAN knows, you know, depending on what type of quality of service you want to give this packet. Um, that's one option. So, for example, let's say that this packet uh, is a is a voice over IP, and there's also a packet that's a um, a um, just an email packet, then you probably want to give priority to this packet, right? Because it's uh, time sensitive, unlike the ether, unlike the email one. So this is for that and for the um, the, the virtual local area network um, information. This here, here is the ether. This is what I was talking about. So the the type they have it here is the as the type. Here's the ether type or the length. So it just depends on whatever version you're using, as you can see here. Um, and here's the payload, uh, same thing. So here they had it as 46 to 1500, uh, same thing, 46 to 1500, uh, but the actual entire amount is 64 to 1522, um, unlike here, because they don't have the optional ones, uh, the optional tag, they don't have the fact that, well, the actual size uh, kind of depends on the size of the header, on this, if it has this optional one or not. Okay, and then here you have, this is what I like about this one, it tells you it's a uh, frame check sequence along with the 32, which is a 32 uh, cyclic redundancy check. And you can read more about this or videos to see how this works if you're interested. The actual check, and here's the interpacket app, 12 octets. And then that's pretty much it uh, for the Ethernet frame.